and hello there friends and welcome to episode five now of the bielsa bible with rob mulholland and mickey Peaker. what an amazing week in bielsaism as it always is like this is what it's such a joy making this podcast at yeah. the moment through uh, an absolute peak era of bielsa's career yeah so it lovely. really is at a peak era of elites fans career as well exactly so yeah we're absolutely loving it and want to say a big thank you to everyone who's been getting in touch we've had some really great um I'm, I, we absolutely love reading all your comments yeah we're getting more and more so keep them coming yeah, and a big thank you especially to John Corcoran, our latest bishop uh, oh, for the bishop. Bible. John so, Corcoran, thank you. Thank you for joining us over on Patreon. He's indeed a corker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, what a great BLC Easter he is. Uh, yeah, a bishop now. Well, congratulations. Yeah, and uh, yeah, thanks to all of you. Like, we're absolutely loving it. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to keep making them because people are actually watching and listening. Yeah, <laughs> we, we love it. Yeah, it's genuinely it. absolutely We were awesome. saying how, how many hours we do a week on this. Yeah. And we reckon it's 15, 20. At least, at yeah. least. I have had jobs where I've worked way less hard than just making this podcast. But yeah, well, it, most of the jobs I do, yeah. I've, all I've ever done. I've I actually enjoy doing this, so I try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go that far with me, but I, I do do it. You do turn up every week. I do, yeah, yeah. I do. I do. I get in that car and I drive here. And it's worth it. Yeah, it's been a beautiful week, though, this week. We've got to celebrate it wow. again. I mean, the well, we always have a chat about the, the, the previous week's game. Exactly. And wow, what a result against you know, one of the greatest teams that's ever played Premier League football. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, they didn't have their full strength, but against Man City, Leeds were just amazing yeah it i mean was... they'd like to strike it didn't they they did and look i think if they'd had one we might have been out of sight within 20 minutes but <laughs> it was a weird 20 minutes wasn't it that's like it wow it was we got rattled a bit we've, i don't think we've seen um, a team who can play like that well they did, they did that to leicester as well in mm. the previous game and lost 5-2 but the yeah. opening 20 was just electric i don't know how city have that how they can reach that level. They, they must knack Stop themselves that. out. I don't know what it is. Well, they're incredibly good and incredibly fit. You know, they are just mm. the best of the best. And Which, oh, we must add here, they are incredibly fit, but Leeds United ran six and a half kilometres more than them. Yeah. I mean, that, and we had we out-possessioned them. We had 52% yeah, possession. Yeah, we did. It was absolutely unreal. Like, we, um, we finished the game as the better team, definitely. Yeah. It was... Yeah, yeah I mean, was... we're only seven teams have ever done that against the Pep Guardiola team. Exactly, so. man. We, we also you've out... learned all the stats this week, haven't you? You've been doing <laughs> some research. You. No, I, I, well, it's a well-known stat now. It's about yeah. the internet, isn't it? We also out possession Liverpool. Let's let's not forget that. Yeah, incredible stuff. Yeah, and like that, that was the thing about this game. Like, I think it was like a real perfect Bielsa game. I think he must have loved it yeah. because it was. Um, I think that you know there was a game um, where I think it was when Athletic played Barcelona and. Um, Guardiola described it as a hymn to football and I think this game was totally that it was if you love football for itself and for what it can be it was a perfect perfect game it had everything it, it was did. just two teams playing at that high intensity with and going that, for it and playing trying that to win a game of football, football. Yeah. exactly but not just trying to win it trying to win it beautifully both teams yeah. you know they, they taking risks the technical passing and yeah the risks play, and it was just um and the breaks and the so uh, exciting the constantly and w what a great moment for that game was the final whistle it showed bielsa oh, and, uh, and, he, and he was i nearly cried i honestly nearly cried you, you could tell it's a moment for him yeah because he just sat there didn't move and, it, and he, like he stared said, at the pitch like he said a little prayer to himself it, it was felt like. it was yeah. almost like it, it was like wow i i'm so I can't believe my team can reach those levels kind yeah, of thing. Is it? Like those that. players were the championship players. You were saying that they're not at full strength. Obviously, I mean, being a striker shot is, is huge to them. Yeah. Because they're the two. But uh, the two striker shot, essentially. But we have still got that championship team. And we didn't have we, Pablo. We, no, know, we didn't. We, we didn't have, have Pablo. We didn't have new signings coming in. We didn't have Rafinha, obviously, who's mm. not bedded in yet. You know that there's more to come from Rodrigo. Mm. Not quite at the fitness levels, but he, he was fantastic. And he, I mean, and that, that save from Edison... Oh, oh yeah. that head, that reaction header was a very top quality save. Not many he made, keepers get that. He made a couple of ridiculous saves. Although he gifted us a goal from a corner. Yeah, he's exactly. scoring off corners. I know, it's wild. weird, isn't yeah, it? I don't it's, trust it. It, it. I suppose maybe last season was just a, a blip and, and blips don't continue well yeah and like uh llorente and um cock both make as much better aerially I yeah think, they you know? really do i mean llorente looked fantastic against wolves didn't he last night sorry portugal same i mean same, same thing isn't it? so he's already <laughs> we're, we're playing them next so he's already had a little it's a rehearsal essentially it isn't has, it it's yeah. like unless some boss put me in i know what situation is here <laughs> uh, but he looked great you know had Ronaldo yeah. in his pocket uh, at times and there's not many people can say that 
so it, I mean, it, it gives us a, a, a quandary, doesn't it, with three centre backs and uh, mm. one of them's our captain and, you've, and the talisman of the club in some ways. Yeah, but it's a beautiful. It makes us more adaptable, is what I'd, I'd say. It makes Definitely, us more we, we could go to the three centre backs as well. Exactly, it? and uh, yeah, it was beautiful to see that, and I think that's been a real thing, like that moment at the end when uh, Bielsa just, just held yeah. Guardiola by the shoulders. It, have you seen the? Uh, I just think stared Quani, into his eyes. I think Quani uh, translated it actually, yeah, and, and he it said. Uh, well, um, and Pep said, "Yeah, it was it, 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 it was a draw. It, it was a fair that, result. It was a fair result, and, and, and uh, it was obviously it was a draw. And, and, and Bill's <laughs> like, are you sure? Are you sure?' And yeah, Pep's yeah. like, absolutely. Yeah, it was really beautiful to see the love and respect between the two of them, mm. and just um, to see two of the great artists of the game going yeah. head to oh, head. It two was... of the greats, oh, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, yeah. obviously we know Bielsa is the great, but Pe Pep Guardiola is a disciple of Bielsa. Yeah, he's a Bielsa Easter. Yeah. yeah, he's one of us. He, he made a pilgrimage out to wherever Bielsa was living. It might have been Rosario for before we started his coaching career. And exactly, he, he learned off the the master that is Yoda. Yeah, 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 that's it. Like, I think that's um, a really beautiful thing about Guardiola, and I think we'll return to that shortly. Perhaps so. We? And it was interesting to note that Bielsa, when you looked at that exchange, kind of really wanted his approval. He did, yeah. But I think he just he he respects him really. You really know, does. He, he respects him, and he just wanted to know his opinion on whether it was a fair, a fair result. result. And yeah. that's all he cared about. I Something. know. Bless was him. it fair? Was it a, was it a great? It, yeah. it was such a beautiful game to watch. It uh, was incredible. It was um, like frenetic and thrilling. joyful. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I, I watched the whole thing with just such a grin on my face. Yeah. Like obviously, like look, a couple of minutes in, I was worried. Well, about twenty minutes in, we were. We were yeah, was it was a case of like, are we going to lose by five? Five or six yeah exactly uh, but uh, the overall performance and just the beauty of the game was incredible it was one of my favorite games i've seen teams are struggling to keep up with us they they, they really are, are. did um, you see that little interview with carl walker talking to andros townsend i on did Twitter? that was brilliant it was like it's like a basketball game yeah, it's, it's like, like mate, it's, it's insane like, it's like mate it's insane right like sterling moved over from the left to the right and their right back goes with him just follows man to man marking yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean like, like, obviously to us that's nothing uh like you know we know this and look the, we're going to get into that a little more today, we are actually we? yeah the fluidity in attack but there's also fluidity in defense as well yeah which completely is, it's all just this is it a system is that what you call it well we'll get <laughs> well, to that well, shortly yeah, we'll see because but yeah another amazing game and brilliant beautiful bielsa football it's yeah. not been that great elsewhere for the bielsa clubs no. to have a little look around no. atlas had a loss to i think nichacha nichacha i hope they're yeah i hope they're the chance like whoa nichacha nichacha <laughs> coming at ya <laughs> <laughs> That'd still be better than that whole Tigers one, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. You're getting mauled. Ugh. Oh, um, dear. Yeah, Club, Club America. Nakatcha, coming at ya. That's lovely, mate. That, and just keep it going. Nakatcha, coming at ya. Fireworks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so like uh, that. Atlas lost to them, so sorry. Oh, Atlas fans. languishing mid table. Never mind. Yeah, well, lower mid table, so fingers crossed it. Well, languishing mid table, yeah. yeah. Uh, Club America had a draw. They're still third, still absolutely smashing. Well it. done, Club America. Well done. Uh, Marseille had a one all draw with Leon. It's another draw, which will be disappointing. But a really good team. Again, yeah, so. Leon, top team. Do you reckon there's someone called Leon that plays for Leon? I hope there is. I don't know if there is. Leon Bailey needs to sign for him. Yeah, just, yeah. just as many players called Leon as possible would be fantastic, wouldn't it? But like the Bill Bow. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Bill Bow system, but in, in, just in, be in surnames Leon. or, or in, in, in four names as well. Either Leon, Leon, I mean. Leon Leon playing for Leon. <laughs> just the dream, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, well, you know what? what? Decent enough point, but... Interesting it... development. Yes. yes. So obviously, Leeds fans will know that um, we rejected the transfer of Michael, Michael Cuisance. Michael Cuisine. Cuisance. Old Mikey Cuisance, as we were already calling Yeah, the square him. ball. <laughs> yeah, and like, we, we look, we... Um, he looked dead exciting, but then he failed the medical at Leeds, but he has pitched up at Marseille and he signed for them. And yeah. I'm dead excited because um, I think yeah, he looks a hell of a player. He does, and it's a nice... We'll be keeping an eye on Marseille, obviously, with the, yeah. with the Bielsa team. So it'll be nice to see his development. Well, and at least if he does amazingly at Marseille, I'm not going to be gutted now. Like, if he, if we had not signed him, he went to somewhere else and then was amazing. He's I'd be devastated. He's staying Yeah, he's staying in the Bielsa club. Exactly. So now, if he turns out to be amazing, he's at Marseille and I'm happy. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, interesting that his price was reduced. So what? What is it about well, medical? Like that Remember the French just like ah, oh, do mean? You know, they're not bothered, just too busy. <laughs> Obviously, once the price drops, it becomes a different risk. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, less of a risk. Exactly. Some might argue financially. Yeah, um, so that's it. So that I think that's what's <laughs> changed. Yeah. yeah, that's important finance. 
it I, is I apparently yeah uh, well, not that we would know much about that on this show we've written not that it. we would have much importance in our lives at the minute if uh, finance is important <laughs> we're two struggling comedians so uh which yeah. brings us on to we'll see us on patreon but yeah. um yeah talking of struggling athletic bilbao are having a, a torrid time i think it's fair to say they're, a bit, they're a bit wank aren't they yeah it's a bad bad time they've had another loss um, 19 yeah they're, look the table doesn't really count this stage of the season it's too Four early games in you know yeah, so right. don't ignore that but it's been a bad start and uh you know we hope it turns around obviously but you're not having Bielsa back you're sorry. not having Bielsa so you've got to learn from him from a distance yeah <laughs> so that's the roundup of the Bielsa teams obviously we've got international friendlies this weekend so it'll be interesting to see how they develop how rubbish is that yeah it's terrible i absolutely hate we just don't i, I mean it's like it, it, we just it's calvin phillips versus wales as far as i'm concerned yeah, it's calvin phillips it. versus tyler roberts yeah i just support calvin I, we, we don't want to england games to get in the way of bielsa is here. yeah like, that's not is on it. it's not on at all. we need that i would much rather they had two weeks training with bielsa than gareth southgate i'll tell you that he's rather inept uh tactically it would say but we are we are getting used to bielsa and yeah. any other game is just inferior yeah completely we've been totally spoiled we are so spoiled we really are uh, but yeah, that's to be so. But uh, that pretty, pretty much brings us to the end of the week's games. Uh, good luck to all the other clubs once again. Once you get back to it, and we'll uh, see you after the international break. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're loving this podcast and really enjoying it, you can support us through Patreon. I'm not exactly sure how Patreon works, but Rob, you know quite a lot about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the one who presses all the buttons on yeah. this podcast. It takes two minutes and we've got some pretty, let's say three pound a month, less, yeah, than, less than a pint a month. Yeah, for the, bo- for the uh, bottom tier, you can join for three quid a month and you get access to everything on there. So basically we're putting up all the full interviews. You'll see through this episode and all the other ones, little clips of interviews. If you want to see the full unfiltered, some of them are like two hours long of unfiltered. And it's, it's talking about our favourite topic of conversation. Yeah, and with great people, already uh, by the time this episode's out, you'll be able to see the full Simon Grayson interview. We'll see a little bit of it in this episode. Also the full John Richardson. And there'll be a new one going up every week. And they are some incredible interviews. Also, if you sign up for the higher tiers, you can get things like personalised shout outs and free merch. But basically, it's a great way for you to support us and make sure we can keep making these because they're not free to do. So you 20 know, hours a week, guys. At least each. <sighs> each so uh yeah I don't, what the mass, I don't know what that adds up to but it's a lot we're not working for minimum wage i'll say that so patreon.com forward slash the bl survival that's the way to help us out cheers and now our regular feature saint of the week saint of the week saint of the week so this week we've had um we had an interesting discussion this week we had a little chat about this because there was one incident that we thought almost represents Beelzebub, and we wanted to discuss whether it counted so the the nomination and this isn't uh someone who is being inducted we want to make that clear this is just a nomination is Mesa Ozil now the story has been this week that the Gunnosaurus the mascot at Arsenal who is great who's great and it's really hard not like even saying Gunnosaurus is fantastic makes me smile (laughs) I'm trying to like this is serious it's about a man losing his job yeah so like this is the problem with it though trying to take it seriously when he's lost his job ask Gunnosaurus yeah it's sad, obviously, right? So the Gunnosaurus has been job. made redundant, basically, and Mesa Özil has offered to pay his wages to bring him back to for the as club. long as as he's an Arsenal player, which might not be that long, to be fair. Yeah. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I don't think this counts, because, like, on the surface of it, that's a very nice gesture to pay the wages of the guy so he doesn't go redundant. Yeah, be it, made redundant. It, there's definitely elements of of something that's beautiful there. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's supporting another human being to work. Well done for yes. that. But the downsides with it, and why I don't think it fits a strict Bielsism, is firstly it's showy. It was done over Twitter straight away, straight away. As soon as he, as soon as you announce you have done something mm-hmm. and 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 you know put it out there in, in, in the public sphere, that is anti Bielsa. You would Bielsa would never be the one to go look what I've done. He would just do it, and then people would you find do out it, and it. you do not let anyone know. You do, do it, do it for own, the right reasons. Reward. Yeah, the the reward is this guy's going to get a job. Yeah. No one else needs to know about it. And also, it's such a drop in the ocean for Mesut Ozil. The amount he earns... 360 is, a week. It's just an, an un... 
unimaginable amount of money and he's been stealing a living for a while well we had a quick conversation in the kitchen didn't we earlier about what he earns a year the kitchen of the church yeah the kitchen of the church we still love the place Uh, and we kind of worked out he's he's somewhere I mean we don't know the tax thing because he's getting away but it's somewhere between 10 and 20 million a a season take home we worked out take home 10 between with our our estimate and like wow a real drop in the ocean and like look right it's not really down to footballers to do that sort of thing it's great when they make those sort of gestures but it comes from the board level you know and uh, they're the ones who need to be fixing it i also i think mesa Ozil is a morally questionable person so we're going to reject his application he's got his massive eyes yeah that's not the problem you can have any sort of yeah. eyes his eyes, say, his eyes are offside kind and loving <laughs> but yeah so we're going to reject him on that front so we think uh, we had a nomination for this person from gary mcveigh our good friend um who is a song maker about leeds he's um, also uh, an under 12 girls yeah the Massey, under 12 girls coach as well and yeah. he, uh, he's very proud to say that he implements the Bielsa system within that under 12s team yeah which is um, great so we, we want to talk to Gary at yeah, some point yeah I mean murder ball sessions with an 11 year old girl that, as so a parent funny, I'm not 100% sure I agree with it but we'll, we'll see what, what we'll see what happens in the future about to get right. a little interview of Gary and, uh, and see what exactly he is doing. Yeah, but he nominated this week, and uh, we think we're going to accept this, Pep Guardiola. Yeah, I, have you got the words that um, Gary actually used? Because it was very well worded. I will do in one second. Ooh. Ooh. So, uh, Gary has said, I'd recommend Pep Guardiola. He took the Old Testament of Bielsa following his pilgrimage to the Holy Ranch in Rosario and developed the New Testament based on Bielsa's teachings. He showed due reverence and deference to Bielsa last weekend. Pope Pep for me. That's I think, very well worded, Gary. Yeah, he's been a real true disciple of Bielsa. He has, um, you know, and as we said earlier, when he was becoming a coach, he went to learn from Bielsa. He went and spoke to him. He went and learned from the source. I think pilgrimage is the right word. It was a true pilgrimage. Yeah. And uh, he's really put it into action. His football shows that it was, in his words, a hymn to football. So for the beauty of that game and for the respect shown and the nature of the game, how... Just, yeah, it was a beautiful sporting contest. And I think that Pep Guardiola deserves a sainthood because he is actually promoting Bielsa around the world, saying beautiful things about him on a regular yeah. basis and definitely one of his disciples. Completely. Saint of the week. Saint of the week this week goes to Pep Guardiola. Congratulations. Saint of the week. Saint of the week. Sure, I'll add that to his <laughs> <Yes>, trophy <CV>. cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> If you are eyeing up some of the cool Bielsa Bible merch we've got knocking around, then you can purchase some for yourself at thebielsabible.com forward slash shop. We've got all sorts of gear. I didn't said merch then and gambled, but it's shop. It's yeah, shop. Forward shop. Yeah. Yes, forward slash shop. shop. Uh, yeah, but if you go on the Bielsa Bible website, you'll find it. Yeah, it's easy to get <laughs> yeah. to. Or but, find us on Twitter and all sorts of things like yes. that. Uh, but yeah, we've got all sorts of gear. You will see both me and Mickey modelling our T-shirts. Love this. It is my favourite t-shirt. Well, there you go. Honestly, it it washes so well. High quality gear, right? This is the thing. It's slimming, it's black, it's got stuff on the back, it's got a great, iconic emblem. Exactly. It's full colour print, front and back. We've got the Bielsa Bible logo on the back as well. Big back print. bit like this mug has got something on the back. Oh, it's the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, exactly. We've got cushions. We've got the cushions with the Lord's Prayer on. Basically, if you... Oh, my snapback, you can buy one of those as well. If you if if you want us to put the logo on it, we've got the logo on it. So have a look there. That helps us out as well. Really appreciating it. We've got merch flying out all over the place. Stickers. So, stickers. You can buy a sticker. Kids Not, love stickers. They do. Yeah. Get them a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for our sermon. But before we get into it, of course, we must first do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who, who art from New Wells. Marcelo be thy name. Our king has come, thy will be done, on the pitch as it is in training. Give us each day our daily nutritionally balanced meal, and forgive us our bad passes, as we dispossess those who pass badly against us. Leeds' man-marking rotation has delivered us from EFL. For thine is the high line, the power, and the running, forever and ever. Vamos, Bielsa, carajo. 
Lovely. Yeah, beautiful. It's such a, a lovely thing to recite. It is. It's, it's calming, yeah. isn't it? We hope that you chant along with us at home. I'm sure the, they do. Yeah, especially if you've got the mug, you can read it off. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, th- today's sermon is strategy. Yeah, it's about planning and strategy and detail. And Something that's very important to Bielsa. Massively important to Bielsa. Like we've talked a lot on this about the emotion of Bielsa, and that's certainly one part of him. But also, he's an incredibly detail oriented man who loves to plan in detail. And tactics are a big part of that. You know, that's... he's he's renowned for his tactics worldwide. A lot of people who don't know the depths of Bielsa will often talk just about his tactics and mm. they are incredible, innovative and Yeah, I mean we've got amazing. a really uh, handy little explainer actually if you want to see um that really should give uh, everyone watching like a full overview. Of yeah, that's what you want a basic overview to begin with. Well, I mean this one is more than basic. We've spoken really? to a real high-end tactical expert here. We've really uh, gone all out and uh, we've got a visual demonstration of Fantastic. some Bielsa tactics. So let's have a little look at that now. Oh look daddy, you've got 4141. Yeah we have got a 4141 and that's often how Bielsa teams set out. However, these fullbacks uh, in possession are going to bomb on. This CD, uh, CDM's will come back and make a back three. The two wide players push on and then we've got the two kind of like a pivot there and we've got obviously the, uh, the CAM trying to influence the game in the middle. And can you see what formation it is now? Yes. One, three, three, one, three. And that's including the goalkeeper. It's a situational change. Really exciting formation by, who's the best manager ever? Bielsa. Yes. Press the button. (laughs) (laughs) Press the button. Do you know what? It's quite interesting, the mind of a child and what you can learn from a child because she mentioned the one. She mentioned the keeper. Mm. No, we don't ever mention the keeper. It's always 10 players, but she mentioned the keeper. And actually, keepers have really come into the game, particularly in possession now. Sure. They, they are definitely part of the team, but the only they reason are. you don't need to put them in a formation is no one ever you, plays two. No, they don't, or none. It's just assumed, I, I, isn't I must it? say this, actually, this is t- <laughs> just what I thought. We once, uh, when we were, uh, I used to play, uh, you know, Sunday League when I was like uh, late teens, and uh, we, we, once, we once had um, eight men. We only had eight men. And then one was turning up, so we had nine. And uh, we started without a keeper. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. It really didn't go well, but the manager was like, we're going to start without a keeper. It was like he had this new idea. He's like, we don't need one, do we? He was just like, what is going on? Yeah, a few went in. Uh, but yeah. but what can you say? You know, but goalkeepers have become so important and they've really played a, a key part yeah. now. I, I want to see, do you know what I want to say? I was thinking yeah. about this. I want to see the overlapping keeper. It's a keeper happen. coming out wide because if you think about it, you know the the right back or left back area. Mm. Often there's a bit of space there, and if you're doing a high press, what 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 not, you want a spare man at the yeah. back and just 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 on the overlap touch line, hugging the touch line, complete and utter confidence in your in your CDMs yeah. and uh, and the, the ball handling skills and just you've got that diagonal, aren't you? That beautiful diagonal. Yeah, it's just, it's extremely high risk. You know that if you could play rush keepers, then Bielsa would do it. Yeah, I think I think there might come a time when we're going to get an overlapping keeper or yeah. even more daring will be an underlapping keeper <laughs> running into trouble and one two in his way up the halfway line and creating that bit of space yeah because it's all about creating numerical advantages and why not if you're not going to lose the ball you don't need a goalkeeper that is a key tenet of bielsa ball like the thing with this is right we're not going to be in this episode we're not going to cover the full depths of what bielsa ball is we're just not going to be able it's to. impossible so we will be coming back to this topic we'll be speaking to more and more experts we're going to get deeper and deeper on more intricate parts of the system what it means and basically by the end of this uh podcast we should all be absolute es- experts we should be able to coach a team as gary mcveigh yeah. does in the same vein but for today we're going to do uh, like an overview of Bielsa Ball and we're going to talk um, we assume if you are watching or listening to this you have seen a Bielsa team play you know what happens you know the basics you know that it's high pressing intense football that's based on quick transitions it's domination of possession yeah, but possession also based. looking verti- for verticality it's high press yeah, uh, we've we've mentioned the three three one three, which we also made famous. I think, really. yeah, he definitely did. Yeah. And it was very, uh, you know, he still uses it now. We often use a four one four one, but which mm-hmm. also is a situational three three one three, as we've just seen in that yeah, it, video. You can see how, how how quickly it can interchange. But we we have got some amazing experts that we've talked to. I must say, the first one we've got coming up, I'm a huge fan of John mm. McKenzie as, as a as a statistician. A sti- What's the word? Statistician. Statistician. He's an analyst. He's brilliant. That's the word. It's not a stats man. We've got stats for that. 
Yeah. He's an analyst and he's a, a part of all stats, aren't we? Which is rather misleading there. Yeah. But they're, they're great analysts. They're um, amazing. And their 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 podcast, uh, uh, their, their Patreon and stuff like that is going. Get involved with that. They mm. are very, very, very good. And he's yeah. given a very brief kind of overview of the 3-3-1-3 formation. And what it actually means, yeah. I actually think the easiest way of talking about some of the facets of Marcelo Bielsa's management is to go in and look at, in particular, the 3-3-1-3 formation that I think a lot of people associate with them. Now, the 3-3-1-3 formation is interesting because you might think, well, we've seen Leeds play that occasionally, particularly in the second season, increasingly in the second season, but not very often in the first season. I think there's maybe four or five games in the first season where Leeds lined up as a 3-3-1-3. Now, the thing to remember about formations is that obviously a lot of the time they're very fluid and teams will change their shape all the time. When we talk about formations, we're talking about the lineup on the field and generally teams will line up in their defensive structure. So for the most part, when Marcelo Bielsa has been at Leeds, we've seen a 4-1-4-1. That's the defensive system that we see Leeds using with a back four and then Calvin Phillips between the line of the midfield and the defence and then a lone striker. But interestingly enough, when we play the 4-1-4-1, we often segue into something like a 3-3-1-3 going forward. And we would call that a situational formation. So in the situation where we're attacking, we would we would sort of slip into that. So what would happen is the, the wing backs can push up. Um, one of the central midfielders can drop a little deeper to pick the ball up. And uh, the two wide midfielders will push up alongside the striker. Now, this system is similar to what happened across Marcelo Bielsa's career. I think he started playing the 3-3-1-3 formation when he was at Vela Sarsfield in, in Argentina on his return to Argentinian football after he'd been in Mexico for a little while. In every team he's been at really that you see that 3-3-1-3 formation appearing situationally when they're going forward. You see that happening at Athletic, the club in Bilbao that he coached and Chile famously using the 3-3-1-3 formation using Gary Medell as a centre-back and Arturo Vidal as a wing-back which I think we saw something similar to that when we saw Leeds playing Cagliari in pre-season this season with Forshaw playing as a wing-back, a position you might not expect to see. At Marseille, Marcelo would be able to use something more like a 4-2-3-1, but again, the segue into a situational 3-3-1-3 is pretty easy from there too. And so as a result of this, I think what you need to realise about Marcelo Bielsa is that talking about formations is not maybe the best way of, of looking at it. I think what you need to think about is a system. I don't know if it's ever been verified, but the famous quote in response to why Leeds don't have a plan B is Leeds do have a plan B, it's just doing plan A but better. I think one of the most helpful ways of thinking about this is that Marcelo Bielsa doesn't think in terms of formations, but thinks in terms of this central system. And the formations are always secondary to that. So he is going to try and set up his team so that they can defend in the best way possible against the opposition. But in attacking, they're able to segue into this attacking system that is going to be repeatable so that his teams can get into that way of thinking where they're doing the same sorts of movements that he's doing on the training ground and they can easily fit into that. And then when you look at it in that way as, as a system, rather than thinking of formations, you can then you can see how team selection might work. So, for example, if you're playing a team where you think they've got a particularly dangerous right winger and you know that you've got a defensive frailties in that area, you might play Barry Douglas over Gianni Alioski because Gianni Alioski is is a much better pressing player and much more attacking player, whereas Barry Douglas might offer you a little bit more defensive steel in there. And when you start thinking about it in that way, you very quickly start understanding how Marcelo Bielsa's system works. Yeah, so what does the word system mean? I have got absolutely no idea. And people use it all the time. It's a great system. You always hear loads of pundits. You hear the everyday man talking about on the street, or woman. And the, the, I don't think people really know what a system is. I don't know what, what is a system. I know what a system is. It's part of a toilet. <laughs> I mean, I, if, if I opened up the toilet and looked into the system, I won't be able to tell you its components. And yeah. I just know what it does. I, what is this? <laughs> what on earth is a system? I don't, I'm getting really confused. Uh, you don't know either. Don't pretend you do. So we'll, we'll try and figure out what a system is. Well, yeah, I think it's a combination of your formation and your playing style. I think that's what people are trying to get at. Yeah, maybe. System, but is the, the is there more to a system probably not actually that, that's, 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 i think i've pretty much covered it 
<laughs> but that's it. Like, I think that was really interesting. Uh, that, that that is the the thing that is more important. Is the whole. It's more like um like I'm trying to find a way that isn't wanky of saying holistic. Oh, but I like, don't like that. You know, it's all all encompassing. It's it's the whole thing. It's not just the way the players are shaped on the pitch. There's so much more to it than that. There's yeah. the automations. There's the set routines. The, the team uh, and play. then the fluidity, like we mentioned, exactly. on and off the ball, man marking, yeah. what you're doing, where and when. I'd I'd love to be a fly on the wall when the when the Bielsa first goes into a, a team and what does it what does it tell them it's repeated patterns of play and running styles with- exactly and like th- that was interesting when he was talking about Chile there that that was the first time I ever saw a Bielsa 3-3-1-3 yeah. in its purest form I think that Chile team might be the purest 3-3-1-3 there's been from yeah. Bielsa I mean uh, I mean Sanchez I remember what, what, yeah. in that World Cup was, was electric he was and- very much the Patrick Manford <laughs> he was yeah, yeah of the Premier League uh, but the, of the World Cup sorry but that, that is the that is the first time I remember it as well. Obviously, yeah. I remember playing Argentina. Yeah, and they were brilliant and beautiful and yeah, played incredible you football. you expect that from Argentina, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think that was, you know, from our naive uh, sense. But that Chile team was such a purely Bielsa team and was so maverick with it. And and, the, and Gary Medell playing at centre-back was the real key thing yeah. to that team. And just he, knocking a midfielder in there. Exactly, and he made them play. And Gary Medell is not a tall man. He's not a lot of play, managers would look at him and see yeah. a centre-back. But it, it's because of that control that he gave. And... I, I, yeah. it, 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 it's preferring a, a possession-based player over a, a physical player that can exactly. win the ball back. Your defending is having the ball. Yeah. You know, that's a huge part of it. I mean... Uh, and Chile with the underdogs. So we, we talk about mm. the egos and when you go to a World Cup full of international stars, a lot of egos. In that Chile team, they were, they, were, they were a system. Exactly. They were all like, yeah, like Sanchez wasn't the huge star. No, he wasn't. I, I was, was just about to mention that. at that time. Yeah, and, and like, he obviously went on to become a huge star mm. at Arsenal and then he went... Uh, and went, went to become a huge summer else at Scum. <laughs> yeah, in, in many respects well done for ripping them off like that <laughs> but uh, that, that was a great chilly team and i remember that team mm. really well and I, d- I didn't know it was a 3-3-1-3 i just thought wow what an attacking brilliant yeah. team it was it's, it's incredibly hard to analyze and on that uh defensive side stats has uh covered that a little bit for us talking a little bit about how that works yeah so let's just break down the, the particular flavours of Marcelo Bielsa's style in terms of attacking and defending. So in attack under Bielsa, football teams play largely possession-based football. And it's actually weirdly low risk in possession, I'd say, Bielsa. I think there's an attitude that Marcelo Bielsa is a particularly gung-ho and frenetic and exciting coach. And I, I think that is true. But in possession, I think Leeds are actually weirdly low risk. I think they would rather keep possession than lose it in the first and second third. And I think that means that Leeds aren't actually quite as versatile vertically frantic as we're sometimes led to believe. However, Leeds do move the ball around a pace. So we've not seen many counter-attacking goals really for Leeds, but when you're watching Leeds play, the ball is always moving around. You see a lot of rotation and interchange between players in a system that's been called positional play. What that means is that Bielsa's teams are looking to manipulate space as a means of breaking down opposition's defensive structures. What you're trying to do is you're trying to pull defenders apart. You're trying to create space and then you're trying to create what are called superiorities in those areas that you've created space. So you want to try and get overloads of players in certain areas so that you know that you're going to be more likely to keep the ball. So when you're playing in that kind of possession-based spatial manipulation style of football, it does require a lot of rote learning. It requires a lot of running lines and drills and training and then trying to reproduce those on the pitch. One of the best examples of those is the Stuart Dallas goal against Stoke at the beginning of this season when you see the ball being passed around in, in a triangle and then the ball being played by Pablo Hernandez to uh, Stuart Dallas, he scores that goal. That is a, the sort of goal that, whilst it looks wonderful and flowing on the pitch, will have been created through hours and hours of practice by the team on the training field. And it's a result of that spatial manipulation, that ability to actually function as a collective better than the opposition has caused many teams during Bielsa's tenure at Leeds to sit deep in rigid structures because if you sit deep in two banks of four or a bank of four and five and you try and compress the space as much as possible it becomes very very hard for Leeds to play it makes it hard for for their collective benefit to really come through so we've we've seen a lot of teams sitting deep as a result of that and then more broadly 
I guess early in Bielsa's time at Leeds, we saw Leeds play a lot of asymmetric football. So we would have a lot of what's called overload to isolate. So you'd have the build-up around Pablo Hernandez, who's Leeds' most creative player. You'd have the majority of players sort of tending towards Pablo Hernandez to help them um, hold the ball, do build-up play, and create an isolation over on the left-hand side of the field where Jack Harrison was. So you'd overload on the right, so you could then float the ball across to the left and then hopefully get Harrison into 1v1s or get Harrison back to up by whichever left back was playing in order to then uh, cause opposition problems as well. And as a result of that, we've seen a lot of opposition pressure through the left back area. So a lot of goals being played in behind the left back because the left back is so advanced down the field. Defensively, there's a few other interesting aspects to, to Bielsa's style. You have, on the one hand, this zonal man marking that he employs, which is he tries to get his team's marking players one versus one according to the zones that they're in. So if someone's in your zone, then you mark that player in certain phases of play, which is not very often seen in professional football. And if you get it wrong, then you leave players unmarked and it can lead to huge amounts of problems. So again, you need to have huge amounts of preparation in order to get that sort of system working properly. Yeah, that's John McKenzie there, the chess champion that is John McKenzie mm-hmm. from All Stats, aren't we? It must be noted, this was recorded in May when yeah. the inevitability of Leeds United going up wasn't quite finalised. Yes. So it, when he talks about this season, we all remember that that goal, that Dallas goal, you know, the yeah. right back appearing there, as a centre forward there, mm. breaking the lines. Uh, that was uh, obviously the last season. So that was a time when obviously Leeds were in the championship and, and John referred to it there that, Team to sit in deep and the frustrating yeah. leads. That was it. It's, it's a very different challenge to be faced at the moment. And it's a different challenge to what Bielsa's faced a lot of times in his career because he's not often with the overdogs, you know. Yeah. And Leeds were very much in the championship last yeah, year. Yeah, we were the overdogs. Yeah. Right? I love that. <laughs> so it's obviously like it's a very different strategy for him to play. I mean, like, obviously, like, thanks so much to all stats, aren't we, for that? It's such oh, a great breakdown. Really great. It's like one of those key things. Like, there are misconceptions about uh, Bielsa Ball, I think. And if you watch a lot of it, like obviously we all have, <laughs> then you, you start to learn some things about it. That um, The idea that it's this chaotic, random, completely fluid, creative football is actually wrong. When, yeah. you, when you really watch it, it's such a finely tuned machine. It's like, I, I would say it's like, a, it's like a Swiss watch, you know, every component in its place all feeding into each other. That's Bielsa ball. It's not random. It's not chaotic. Everything has to work perfectly together. Otherwise, the whole system collapses. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And, and you, you've got to remember that the, the, the strategy in the championship is, is, is different to the strategy that mm. Bielsa is going to have to employ in the Premier League. Totally. And, and like you said before, we, we've been, it was frustrating watching Leeds because teams sat deep and frustrated. You can't, I think, realise you can't go out and beat Bielsa. If you want to beat Bielsa, defend, sit deep, mm. break, frustrate. And, and teams did that well, actually. I mean, we missed a, a, a host of chances on a lot of occasions. Yeah. But it was frustrating. The ball forced it out wide. Mm-hmm. And we, we the ball always ended up out wide. And in the Premier League, the strategies changed. And in many respects, like a lot of people did predict, you may have done yourself, it's got easier attacking. It has. It's um. It's there's more space opened up because teams are coming at us, and like that's why we're seeing the real beauty of Bielsa ball at the moment. We're seeing some real incredible peak Bielsa ball because teams are having a game against us, yeah. and like that's when we're getting that like wonder that we got against Man City, and we saw there both teams playing that system to the fullest yeah. leads to the most beautiful football. There was a great bit of analysis from that Man City game that showed mm. leads breaking, then losing the ball. In transition, City break. And this sprinting that the Leeds players do to get back is... I've, I don't think I've ever seen a team do that. Yeah. I've never seen a team do that. You, it's head down. That's it's it. head down. It's like, it's like an Olympic sprinter for the first 10 metres. Mm. Head down. Just cover the ground. And then City lost the ball. What did Leeds do? Broke again. Yeah. yeah. It was three sprints. It's and that, the, the fitness required to recover from that is incredible. Well, yeah, actually, I think there is a very key element to that as well. Because, like, Bielsa's planning doesn't just come down to the tactics used by the team. I think it's also really important. He has a man management style that works and he keeps because he gets the players to believe in the system and to go full pelt for it. And if they're not fully committed to it, it isn't going to work. Yeah. And for a little interesting perspective on that, we spoke to a man who knows all about man management, a guy who's absolutely brilliant at it. We spoke to Simon Grayson, who I think is probably, since David O'Leary, the only competent Leeds manager we've had yeah, before I think, Bielsa. I think 700 games, something like that, or maybe perhaps He's managed, that. yeah. Yeah, man, so a man who really knows his stuff. Yeah, so here's what he had to say about Bielsa's man management. 
again, man management of your players is it's probably the biggest thing we, instead of really in front of tactical now and all stuff like that. Of course, we all need the tactical knowledge. We all need that. But if you can get a group of players playing for you, then it makes your life so much easier because you know that they're going to run through a brick wall for you. They're going to chase. They're going to take on board things. They might not agree with what you're saying at times, but because you've got that relationship with them, that they'll say, well, yeah, he's, he's done 15 years. He's 700 games for promotion. He knows what he's on about. Mm. Don't necessarily agree with it, but I'm going to trust him with it and we'll run with it because of that respect that hopefully the players are with you. And it can work the other way at times. You, you go to Sunderland and you had a group of players that you you could have given them, oh, I won't say a million pound each, and to try and get the best out of them, they still might have down tools. But yeah, I think they did that a few million, times. I they, think they did it with they, a more than probably, a million, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but they'd probably earned a million pound the year before, so they weren't too bothered about another million. To be fair. Yeah. Um, but it's it, it's getting the group of players working with you and that respectfulness and that honesty. Well, you said it's interesting you use the word honesty. How do how how important do you think honesty is in a manager's trade? Can you be too well, honest? Well, I'm just going to say you've got to be careful that you're not too honest. And um, I also try and relate back that how would I want to be told in certain situations about things? I think if you if you're leaving a player out or you're trying to sell him or whatever, if you can then tell him the reasons for doing it. And I am, I don't, I'm not saying 100% that I've not told the odd fib to a player because some players react differently to, to others. So you, I'm not saying that every decision I've made, I've, I've said perfect response or anything like that. But it's, it's just knowing that if you've done something that you can think, well, it's, it's basically... Uh, what I'm thinking and the reasons for doing it. And if they don't like it, well, then at least they've got to be respectful of that I'm telling them what I think is the reason why we've done things. Mm. You know, in, in terms of Bielsa squad, yeah, he doesn't drop many players. You know, he, he has a set 11, but then you've got a 22-man squad. So you've got 11 players who just aren't playing. But So it must be frustrating for them. So, But to be fair, you don't see... I know Bogots, whatever his name is, is complaining about not getting game time but the rest seem quite placid they don't seem to be saying no one's kicking off how, how do you think he's achieved that it's yeah it's tough isn't it because and you do because he doesn't make five or six changes from a game after a defeat or anything like that it's got a hard core of players and that's why he doesn't carry the big squads really and he trusts the younger players that the younger players are not really going to be they're on the bench. They're not going to be kicking off too much because mm. they've not earned a living in the game yet in terms of number of games. And it's if they're on the bench, that's their dream. They're playing in, they're in Leeds United's 18 a few weeks. And that's why I don't think he has carries a big squad because he's reluctant to change it around too much. Players who've played 500 games in the Premier League might have a little bit of different reaction to, uh, to different situations. So a really good point made by Simon Grayson because it's something you don't always think about. How mm. do you keep a squad of 22 happy, especially when Bielsa's got his rigid 11? Yeah. And the strategy that Bielsa's employed, use kids. Yeah, the people often um, you know, wonder why he has so many young players. It's because of their eagerness. It's psychological as well. You've got to remember this is a game played with humans. It's yeah. no, they're not chess pieces. They're you know? not. And you know what? One of our kids coming through right now, uh, Leif Davis, I yeah. saw an interview that Leif did and he was so determined. He said, I've got players ahead of me. Yeah. The great players, but I want to make that spot mine. And yeah. you forget about the hunger on the bench that these kids have. Yeah. They and it want keeps, to make the first team. And it keeps the first team honest. If yeah. you've got someone trying their utmost behind you, you've got to work. You yeah. know, like it's uh, like... And you're right what you said before about everyone's got to buy into the system. If you've mm -hmm. got one component of a Swiss watch that isn't working, you just bought a 17,000 pound watch that doesn't work. <laughs> and you're not very happy about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But with, uh, you know, with Leeds United, it'd be a four. Five million pound watch. Yeah, well, yeah. that's how much Leeds United was seems bought like, for. Seems I think, like a snip. Yeah, that's months. what I was referencing. Is a little cheeky. Yeah, oh, nice. Cheeky good, uh, good, good strategy. Thank you very much, mate. <laughs> I've been planning. Yes, you certainly have. <laughs> but uh, what was really interesting was I wanted to ask Simon this because obviously, like Simon was a great manager for Leeds and did a wonderful job. We really love him. Uh, such a great interview as well, wasn't he? What a nice bloke. As really well. top bloke. Yeah, absolutely really love lovely. chatting to him, which was a real pleasure. But I wanted to ask him how he would set up against the BLC a team. I thought it was a unique perspective to ask him. Yeah. He's never actually managed against Bielsa, but 
How would he do it? And here's what he said. Look, I cannot be divulging that sort of information <laughs> just in case I've come up against Leeds in my managing career over the next few years, maybe. You never know. You, you know, know Bielsa would watch this if he was going to play you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and But ultimately, I'd, I'd make sure that I had that team bus and park it right in front of the uh, the goal in the six-yard box to start with. Yeah, so there we go. I think uh, he would have followed suit with a lot of championship managers and kept it pretty simple. Park but, the bus. Hey, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the very few strategies that... You yeah, employ for, for straight and break. That's yeah. why I, that's my little catchy thing that I've, I've strategized. That's what I've come up with. That's Listen, nice. Bielsa, it's Bielsa this week. It's for straight. It's break. Yeah, Bielsa's planning and strategy isn't just tactical. It's it's in every detail of the game. It's so minutely thought out. He has a plan for everything, it, and I think that rubs off on other people. People are impressed yeah. by this. We saw perfect example of this this week. Robin Cox speaking about why he came to Leeds. And I think this is a perfect example of Bielsa's planning. Leeds sent me a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I could see exactly how Marcelo Bielsa analysed me and how I fit into Leeds. Video sequences were played to me in which game situations from the Leeds were cut parallel to those from me in Freiburg from last season. I've never really had anything like it. I had the feeling I've never been analysed in such detail. That really impressed me and was a key factor in my decision. For some reason, I just wanted to slap me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant with a glove as well. That yeah. was uh, that is exactly how Robin Cox speaks. Uh, it was brilliant. Uh, not even an imitation. It was like him. I just closed my eyes. He was in the room. <laughs> but that, that's an amazing example of yeah. us signing a, a really high class international defender yeah. and and impressing him before he's come this and just it. going wow. I mean, and it's almost an invitation. This is how you can fit in, and this is why. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that um, the video the level of video analysis goes down to showing sequences in games and where he has done a similar thing and where he can totally fit into the system. I think that breaking it down to that level is, it's got to be impressive and it's yeah. got to be flattering as a player as well. That's a good word to use. Flattering. It comes into the man management side it as well. It certainly does. Because if someone's paid that much attention to you and that much attention to your game, it's going to be impressive and you want to go work for that guy rather than someone who goes, yeah, you can I, probably I think fit in. You feel like they know you. And Which they're is planned important. for you, yeah. exactly. And uh, yeah, it's obviously, it's impressed all of us. And it's clear to see that like, level of detail, the attention to detail just goes through everything that Bielsa does. And that's a really important lesson. I think that's the lesson of our sermon today is to pay attention to the details. Go the extra mile. We've talked yeah. about the fact that plug sockets were moved at Thorpe Arch yeah. where, because they weren't quite the right distance away from it. And, and it's the level of detail that the, the any litter being left around. Mm -hmm. The fact that he comes from an, uh, an architect family who plan, mm -hmm. obviously when you plan the building, everything meticulous detail. And that's what happened uh, with blueprints. We talked about that last week with uh, coming to Leeds. He looked at blueprint at Thorpe Arch. Obviously the uh, hotel Griefer, which he apparently was really kind of like going into the depths of like what is happening here, everything's taken care of, analysed, the whole the whole building's visualised and yeah. And, you know, we're, we're going to go more into the uh, details of these incidents uh, as much as we can. We'll break down each one. We we'll definitely want to be speaking to more. Yeah, we need more information, this. actually, because we, said we, we feel like we know that things happened, but there's so much more to the Bielsa yes. story that so, we need to get the details. If you are a uh, BLC star watching this who feels like you can add more detail on any of his periods in his career, we're particularly looking for people who can tell us more about Newells and Velez and Atlas and America, uh, Bilbao, Chile. Marseille, Chile. We, look, we love you Leeds fans. We know you and we know the lead story. Yeah, and we'll continue to get the lead story. Exactly. And it's, it's continuing to evolve. Continuing, but we want to go more into the past, more into these details, and we will do in future episodes. But I think that pretty much concludes our sermon today. Pay attention to the details and they'll pay attention to you. <laughs> And now to conclude our episode today, we have another parable from the Bielsa Bible, one of our lesser known stories of Bielsa that have emerged from our digging around in the crypts. What have you got to us for this week? This Mickey? is incredible. This is all the way back uh, to 1992. Wow. When Bielsa was um, managing New Yeah, fantastic. This is set in Argentina. Uh, well, I'll go straight into the parable. This, I mean, this is really old. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's handwritten as well. Yeah, you should be wearing gloves when you're I, handling. I, yeah, absolutely. That. I, I feel like I'm. I'm blessed to be holding this. I can't believe it. I'll be very careful. And we begin in 1992. 
Bielsa travelled to Buenos Aires with his formidable Newell's team to play an away fixture against River Plate. As the team bus made its way through the streets of Argentina's capital city, Bielsa noticed that many of the people's eyes were faint and dim with hunger. Stop the bus, he demanded. Marcello descended the coach stairs, stepped into the dusty streets and began to ask the locals why their eyes were so faint and dim with hunger. Our fish have abandoned us and our economy is in decline. There is little hope for us, replied a wise but scrawny child. Upon hearing this, Bielsa raised his head and bellowed, a football manager's job is to provide hope. Say no more and follow me. Soon the crowds gathered and followed Bielsa through the city. Many fans left the stadium and joined the march wearing their River Plate replica shirts and letting off fireworks. Bielsa led them to whatever the river that runs through Buenos Aires is called. He stopped, turned to the crowd, which was now 50,000 strong, and said to them, You are the great River Plate. Go forth and claim what is rightfully yours. As he spoke those words, the river parted and revealed 50,000 plates lying on the river bed, all stacked high with delicious cuisine. Gasps of amazement could be heard as 50,000 people ate and drank in joyous splendour. Bielsa's 1992 retro Legion United tracksuit dazzled in the bright sunshine and then suddenly he vanished. The scheduled football match was abandoned and River Plate were awarded a 3-0 home win. It remains the greatest ever defeat in footballing history. Well, there we go. The story of Bielsa feeding the 50,000. That's incredible. Wow, I mean, we're just unearthing that. I know, I mean, look, right, you're always... I've just dropped it on the floor, it's probably disintegrated. <laughs> we're always learning new things about Bielsa, mm. but very interesting to learn that whilst Newell's manager, he was out feeding River Plate fans. Yeah. Yeah, whilst wearing a 1992 Leeds United tracksuit. Yeah, apparently big he's always worn Leeds United tracksuits. Right, big fan of Howard Wilkinson, was yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, massive. That was a great tracksuit, that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really wacky design, a bit trippy. It was a great tracksuit. Yeah, it was. Well, you can see why he was into it. There we go. Yeah. We'll have another parable for you next week from the Bielsa Bible. We will, but before we end and conclude yeah. today's episode, uh, there's, there's been another song. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, th th we've got a BLC star over in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, she's called Natalie Hernandez, and she's started up a new business. Good surname. For it a is a BLC really star. great, great surname. And um, Natalie has started a business writing songs for people. Uh, apparently the Americans weren't told to down tools in the arts, so they, they've they've kept going. And she did this for us for free yeah. in the hope that um, we'll enjoy it and that Bielsa will one day hear it potentially because yeah. she loves him so much and in the hope that maybe someone will visit her website and potentially commission a song. I don't know how expensive she is. She did it for free. She's a true for Bielsa us. Easter. Yeah. yeah, You'll have to pay. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but yeah, you can, you can negotiate, negotiate your own deals. Yeah. Is the, is the, is whatever strategy you wish to... Rem <laughs> I, I take care of the details. But she, I, I gave her very few details on yeah. this actually and just said, can you do something for us? And, yeah. and this is what happened. So to play us out, we will leave on this. Uh, it is an alternative Bielsa Bible theme tune. I uh, love it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure um, to sign up on the Patreon if you want to get some extra content. Go check out our merch shop, thebielsabible.com forward slash shop. And we'll be back again with another we sermon shall. next Saturday. We'll play out with this song. Uh, but before we do, we'll say those three, three magic words. words. Vamos, Bielsa, Carajal. This is a podcast from Mickey and Rob Talking about Marcelo the God He is a genius, a role model You're listening to the Bielsa Bible Bielsa, Bielsa Bible Bielsa, Bielsa Bible Survival. Bielsa, Bielsa Bible.